And today we have a really great talk from a journaling practice shared by Marita Etherington, who will be sharing with us a little bit about grace, kindness, and letting go. And um, Marita is joining us from Toronto. And um, yeah, it's really great to have you here, Marita. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Janelle. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it'd be great just to hear from you a little bit about your background. I know you've worked for over 25 years in the mental health realm. So kind of your pathway as a nurse and um, what brought you where you are today with this work. Yeah, I, I've been a nurse 25 years, different settings. I've, I've done some teaching as well, and then always seem to go back to mental health. So the, the bulk of my experience is in mental health. And when the pandemic started, I, um, I had to leave the bedside. I was there part time. And uh, my husband has some health issues. So to keep him safe, I stepped away. And um I don't know how it happened, but I started my own practice. It's something that I have always wanted to do. And um, I started pro bono with a, an organization that was helping healthcare providers with the stress of COVID. Um, and then slowly I started to get clients and I do some subcontract work. And in Ontario, in Canada, uh, nurses with the you know right knowledge and skill and education can use the title RN psychotherapist. Um, and that's what I do. So I have, um, I've got amazing clients that, you know, I, I meet with them video or phone. And we also do texting with some clients, you know, if that's their, um, that's their comfort, right? We, we do this, it's called unlimited text therapy. Um, so it, it really kind of, it sort of evolved very naturally, where um, as soon as I had my first client, it just felt like, yeah, you know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And mm -hmm. it, like all the pieces just kind of molded and fell into place. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I started seeing, you know, themes emerging um, in terms of, you know, stress and self-care. And, um, and that's where the, the grace, kindness and letting go came from. And mm -hmm. um, one of our kids, her middle name is Grace. So I tend to use that word every chance I get, <laughs> it, it, not, not as her name, but just the meaning of the word grace. So I love that word. Um, and it, it just, yeah, we, I was meeting with a client and we were talking and my recommendation was, Hey, you know, how about you show yourself some kindness, you mm -hmm. know? And the, the client said to me, they said, well, how do you do that? I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was stumped. And I said to the client, I said, you know what, that's a really good question. And I said, let me, let me think about that. And, and I, you know, found some resources. And I mean, we talked about it, but it was a really kind of like an aha moment. Mm -hmm. where it's like, we talk about that a lot. You know, we talk about mm -hmm. compassion and self love and acceptance. But how do you really do it? Mm -hmm. You know, so um, I took, I think I got more out of that session than maybe my client did. Because it was just like, whoa. And then I started seeing it everywhere. You know, yeah. I started seeing it with other clients. I started seeing it with family and friends. And, you know, you mm. start to see it in t like TV shows. You see it everywhere. Mm. <laughs> so that's how this came about. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. So how, how do we do that? What are the steps to showing grace and kindness? And well, you know what? Are? Yeah, I've, I've pulled many different things because mm -hmm. depending on who you're talking to different things will you know light them up compared mm -hmm. to other people right so if you're one of those people that need like you know you kind of have to see the project like oh look this is what I did today right mm -hmm. so something like you know going through photo albums or journals um, you know mm -hmm. and like that's part of the kindness because you're going through like hey I wrote this 10 years ago or five years ago um, yeah. and you're going through a photo album like I had I think like four boxes of Christmas cards and birthday cards. And at the beginning of the mm -hmm. pandemic, I took it upon myself to tidy those up. And mm -hmm. uh, our youngest daughter, who's three, you know, she's like, I'll help. And I'm like, oh, okay, you'll help. And we went through it, you know, and then seeing it all lined up in boxes, like this belongs to this child and this child. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, a period of grace and kindness and then letting go of some of it. You know, you read some cards and it's like, hey, I haven't talked to that person in a while. So mm. it was, you either send a text or it's like, hmm, okay, well, that friendship stopped a few years ago for various reasons. Mm. Um, and then, you know, other people where, you know, they need to be in nature uh, and mm -hmm. get out for a walk, right? So they don't, don't want to be in their head or they're in their head too much. 
um, mm-hmm. you know, doing their job, right? So mm-hmm. being one with nature. And mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not like a big hiker or runner or anything like that, mm-hmm. but I can appreciate, you know, the fresh mm-hmm. air and the birds chirping. Um, mm-hmm. So that's another way of, of letting go, mm-hmm. letting go of the stress. Mm-hmm. So those are two like kind of activities, right? And then I'm very big on meditation, really mm-hmm. big on it. And mm-hmm. um, I have lots of clients that say, no, I, I don't like that. Like, it, it does, yeah. I don't feel good in my body when I do that. So I'm like, yeah. okay. So we either dismiss it entirely or mm-hmm. we really chunk it down where mm-hmm. I'll say, you know what, when you're waiting for your coffee, mm-hmm. you know, take, take three deep breaths, mm-hmm. right? Or you're in the shower or in the bath, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Or even like as nurses in the med room, mm-hmm. right? I used to do a lot of that <laughs> like just mm-hmm. to catch my breath. Where it's yeah. like, you know, I know I'm safe here, right? It's that feeling mm-hmm. of safety, right? And mm-hmm. giving yourself that that space, permission, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. I think it's so easy, especially, you know, being a nurse or a healthcare professional, where mm-hmm. you treat people with a lot of kindness mm-hmm. um, and you really attend to them. Uh, yeah. I, I used to practice like in the hospital where I would, I would care for my clients the way I would want somebody to care for my mother. Like that was always mm-hmm. my, my vision and mm-hmm. that guided me right? Mm -hmm. Um, But that can wear and tear, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not the patient's fault. And it's not Mm -hmm. your fault. It just is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. Especially on a tough shift. So you you need you need places of safety in your workplace now more than ever. Mm -hmm. Um, So the meditation, like even just three breaths, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Some clients will think like, well, do I have to do an hour? Mm -hmm. No, no, you don't. Right. Yeah. If that's your thing. And you've got the hour, then of course, mm-hmm. sure. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. But if you just need like a tip of the iceberg kind of thing, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. three deep breaths, do it three times a day, yeah. you know? And, and sometimes, I mean, oftentimes I'll do it with my client, like, especially mm-hmm. if it's the first time they've tried it, I'll say, okay, let's do it together. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then also mindfulness, you know, mm-hmm. just being really present. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and clients will sometimes get confused, right? Like, well, what's the difference? Right. And and there's also a mindfulness meditation, right. Mm -hmm. And mindfulness is being present, like feeling Mm -hmm. it, you know, being very aware of your surroundings. And I mean, Mm -hmm. I I find um, like with our littlest, um, my favorite activity with her right now is to color. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm painting a masterpiece, you know, Mm -hmm. with the Crayola. Right. And, and that's when I feel most present with her. Right. Mm -hmm. Get tired. Um, yeah. you know, we, and we've got teenagers plus our little one. So mm-hmm. it's a big age gap and we are that yeah. much older. <laughs> so yeah. for me, it's like, okay, I am tired. <laughs> right. So Yeah. And, you know, in terms mm-hmm. of that mindfulness, even connecting with a friend, mm-hmm. right. You know, sometimes mm-hmm. you might be having coffee or lunch, uh, not so much now for us in Toronto uh, because of the lockdown. Um, but sometimes mm-hmm. you, you'll be like, wait, what did you say? Because mm-hmm. you're not, you're not fully present you're distracted, mm-hmm. you've got a lot on your mind, right. you know, different, different burdens or whatever. Right. Mm. So th- those are, those are big ones that I use. Mm. And then um, like forgiveness, mm-hmm. right? Like I have clients that come to me that they feel bad about stuff they've done. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, you know, whoever has been faulted, that person's mm-hmm. done the forgiving, but the client mm-hmm. hasn't forgiven themselves. Right. Mm-hmm. And so just, you know, not just saying the words, but mm. putting yourself through the process of like, you know what, I, I do forgive myself, you know, realizing mm. we're not perfect. It's okay mm-hmm. to not be perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and, and it takes time, like it doesn't happen mm-hmm. overnight. And right. I all say to a client, you know what, allow yourself five minutes mm-hmm. of loving, loving yourself five minutes in the day and set mm-hmm. the timer, set the timer mm-hmm. in this five minutes. I'm not going to blame myself. Right? right. And then you stretch it out to 10 minutes, an mm-hmm. hour. Right. Mm-hmm. And slowly. Right. And it's always a question of like, how do you do that? How do you do that? Right. Because we can walk around with so much disappointment and sadness mm-hmm. and fear, you know, mm-hmm. um, and then along with that forgiveness, sometimes you'll have that, um, that negative voice or that really mm-hmm. critical critic in your, in your head. Mm-hmm. Um, so I say, okay, you know what, give yourself 10 minutes to dwell on it, like dwell on it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then when that time is up, right, then you put it in a box and mm-hmm. you put it away for the day. Mm-hmm. And then you bring in um, like the opposite. Mm-hmm. You have to find something nice to say about yourself, something positive, 
Yeah. Right. And usually it's like, oh, I'm a kind person. You know, I care about people. I'm funny. Mm-hmm. And then I'll say, okay, write it down. Right. Mm-hmm. And some people mm-hmm. do have a journal and some mm-hmm. don't. I'm like, okay, sticky note, <laughs> sticky mm-hmm. note, and just yeah. put it somewhere where you can see it, put it in your wallet, you know, mm-hmm. put it on your laptop. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't, journaling doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be mm-hmm. hours and hours, you know, just a few mm-hmm. minutes. Um, and, and if a client is writing something upsetting mm-hmm. or, or, or even friends, I always say like, you know what, you should add gratitude to it at the end. Mm-hmm. Right. And then it just gives you that kind of like, almost like a wave, right. Yeah. Where you're not stuck in that heaviness. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and sometimes it'll, you know, it'll sound very artificial or like, Hey, that kind of feels weird, mm-hmm. but I'll say, you know, just give it a chance, give it mm-hmm. a chance. And it does, it does slowly start to work. And mm-hmm. it's not perfect. Nothing's perfect. Mm-hmm. Nothing's a cure all. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you're if you're going to write down something heavy, like oh, I made mm-hmm. this really big mistake at work today, mm-hmm. then counter it with, mm-hmm. you know what? But two weeks ago, I had this really amazing experience, or mm-hmm. I'm really good at this. Yeah, um, that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that was so rich. So many practices there and tools we can use to bring more grace and kindness into, into our lives and to the way we think about ourselves and talk to ourselves. And that really spills over into the way we, we interact with others and patients as well. So it's a really beautiful practice, both for self-care and for care of our patients when we're more filled up with our own kindness or better able to give kindness to others. So yeah, love absolutely. And I think yeah. if you, if you share it, like depending mm-hmm. on what setting you're in, right. And, you mm-hmm. know, in terms of your own boundaries with your clients, I think mm-hmm. it's okay to tell the client that, right. Mm-hmm. I, several times I had clients, you know, in the hospital setting mm-hmm. where, where they would go for a coffee because they had privileges mm-hmm. to do that. And they would yeah. say, well, can I bring you something? I'm like, no, right. no, I'm okay. But yeah. they recognize that if we're going to pour into them, mm-hmm. we have to also do the same. Mm-hmm. And it, I think it gives them that feeling of if I'm taking care of myself, mm-hmm. then they're worth it too. Mm-hmm. But if I'm complaining and like, oh yeah, I hate being here. I'm like, oh God, mm-hmm. two more hours. Mm-hmm. That's going to rub off on them. So right. I've often said to my clients, you know, in my private practice, as well as I worked mm-hmm. when I worked in the hospital, I'll mm-hmm. say like, yeah, you know what? I got to get mm-hmm. some more sleep tonight or yeah, mm-hmm. I, I mean, point of getting extra sleep or, Mm -hmm. you know, and and clients that knew me, they would say like, how come you look pale today? And Mm -hmm. then because they knew me so well, I would say, well, actually I've got a migraine and they could Mm -hmm. read that. And then Mm -hmm. that kind of empowers them. And it also levels the playing field because Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times in mental health, as well as other areas of nursing, Mm -hmm. there is that power differential Mm -hmm. and you, you want to lessen it as much as you can. And, and I always tell the clients you're in the driver's seat. Like I'm, I'm along for the drive for the ride, you know, and I mean, I, I might tweak things with them, but they're in the driver's seat and they know themselves. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's just that allowing yourself to trust mm-hmm. yourself that you do know yourself. Mm-hmm. Well, I really appreciate that insight. I think it's, um, it's really an important part for human connection to have, to have this vulnerability that even like you were saying, like equalize the playing field to mm-hmm. be able to be vulnerable and express our own <clears throat> needs like makes clients patients feel safer to express theirs as well and feel um, like you'll understand because you have been through similar maybe not the exact same experience but yeah. have been felt similar struggles or challenges whatever that may look like for yeah. you so yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, that's beautiful yeah um and I do, I do that with family too. Um, yeah. I do that with my mother, right? Um, yeah. You know, if she's struggling, like with COVID, she's struggling. She can't see her yeah. grandkids. And, mm-hmm. you know, I've, I've taught her some mindfulness and, you know, I, I, it's back and forth. I'm like, mom, I've been doing this for 20 years, right? This mm-hmm. is how I handle my anxiety. And mm-hmm. um, with our three-year-old, like the older kids do meditate. Um, mm-hmm. And the three-year-old, she's got a bit of a temper. So I'll say, mm-hmm. you know what, you need to, to breathe. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I'll say, mm-hmm. put a hand on your belly and on your chest and yeah. she can feel it. Right. And then when mm-hmm. she sees me getting upset, she'll, she'll say, mommy, you need to breathe, mm-hmm. um, you know, and sharing that because it is a gift and mm-hmm. it's, it's a technique that really costs nothing, right. Just mm-hmm. a few minutes mm-hmm. of your time. 
Um, mm-hmm. And it helps to connect and to, yeah. to kind of break that cycle of like, I'm completely out of my mind right now in terms of mm-hmm. I'm upset, I'm going to lose my temper or, or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 That's beautiful. Um, yeah. And I'm curious to learn more too about the, your practice and the mental, um, mental health uh, psychotherapist RN and, mm-hmm. and teaching that you've done and, and how you integrate these kinds of holistic approaches to mental health into the broader um, Western medical system and how mental health is viewed. And um, yeah. Yeah, it, it's interesting mm-hmm. because it, um, I, I guess I don't see it as not Western. You know what I mean? <laughs> because it just, um, when a client meets me for the first time, this is what they get, you know, and then it's a, it's up to them. Like, do you feel comfortable? Do you want to continue? Do you want to look for a different therapist? Um, and it just blends in. It mm-hmm. just becomes, it's definitely part of my practice. And I, I do have more formal, um, traditional, like uh, cognitive behavioral and dialectical behavioral. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm currently being trained in EMDR. Um, mm-hmm. But there's definitely this, this is how I connect with my clients. And Mm -hmm. I would, there's been a couple where it's like, no, that's not for me. Um, Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But most are like, oh yeah, you get it. You get Mm -hmm. it. Like, Mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, that is how I feel. Mm -hmm. And then they'll say to me like, so you're saying that's normal. I'm like, Mm -hmm. well, it's not, not normal, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. And there's a, and I've, I've really learned to like, if a client says to me, well, this is my coping strategy and I know it's not healthy. That's how it Mm -hmm. usually goes. Right. Especially Mm -hmm. if it's, um, I don't know, like overspending or yelling at their partner or, Mm -hmm. or whatever, right. Where they, Mm -hmm. they label it ineffective. Right. Mm -hmm. So I always point out like, actually that shows strength that you were doing that. Mm -hmm. right and it it becomes ineffective over time right and then Mm -hmm. you're looking for healthier coping strategies right that are not as destructive um Mm -hmm. but I think there's always strength because somebody's trying Mm -hmm. right even when somebody says you know uh, I've been diagnosed as borderline or I think I might Mm -hmm. be borderline right there's a Mm -hmm. I think there's a stigma there's a big stigma with that in mental health um Mm -hmm. so we we break it down right Mm -hmm. where it's like no, there, there's really nothing that you need to feel badly about, right? Because mm-hmm. if somebody has, you know, borderline traits, that's a coping mechanism, right? That's mm-hmm. always been my approach in my work, where it's like, you developed that in answer to something that was going on in your world, mm-hmm. right? And now you're beginning to realize like, hey, this isn't working. How come I keep mm-hmm. breaking up with this person? How come mm-hmm. I keep choosing the same type of partner? right? Mm-hmm. How come we're having the same fights over and over? How mm-hmm. come my brother and my sister and my mother and my boyfriend are all saying, I do this, mm-hmm. right? So I, yeah. I, I do approach it with kindness. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not a big tough love kind of person. Um, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, like I said something to a client last night and she's like, well, if you're going to put it that way and um, it came across mm-hmm. stronger, right? But she, mm-hmm. she laughed and so did I, you know? Um, but yeah, and it, I mean, a lot of times therapy is like Mm -hmm. talking to a friend. Like I think everybody should be in therapy, right? That's what I think, you know, for Mm -hmm. me, it's just like going in for a checkup, right? Um, And some people do call it that, like it's a tune up, you know, like I want to come in and just look at a few things, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really appreciate that reflection. I think it's, um, I mean, I wasn't specially trained in mental health as a nurse, but just in my general nursing training, I felt that the mental health training that I did receive was so focused on specific diagnoses and medications. And um, it's really nice to think about mental health in a, a more holistic way in the sense of just like all of us have, all of us need mental health support on some level. And um and it is good to also empower ourselves and what kinds of practices we can use to boost our mental health. And um, like you said, not stigmatizing any kind of diagnosis that's there or not, but just like recognizing what are the, what are the challenges that we're dealing with and how can we empower ourselves to shift patterns and shift mindset and, um, and yeah, that, to recognize that we all need that support, not only, um, if we have a formal diagnosis or mm-hmm. just kind of. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I tend to call it more, more and more, I'm calling it mental wellness. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's been a shift in my own brain, like this last yeah. year with COVID, um, because I think everybody's struggling. Yeah, everybody is right. I mean, and there's a lot of talk of like, oh, you know, mental health for children, right? They need to get to school, be with their friends, right? Um, and there's a lot of talk that some couples are really struggling, you know, financially, um, jobs, like all this stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you don't hear a lot about people getting stronger through the mm-hmm. pandemic. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, I look back and I think my husband and I have been back together 20 years. And I mm-hmm. said to him at the beginning, I'm like, imagine if we were newlyweds and we were mm-hmm. locked up together. Like, that would be amazing. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Right. So we would have all this quality time together, you know, stuck in our mm-hmm. home. Um, but we have three kids demanding our time. So it's like, oh, uh, you know, um, yeah. but it's hard. It's hard to see the uh, the bright spots in this. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't think we're getting the messages through, say, social mm-hmm. media or mm-hmm. the government or whoever to say, like, hey, look at the bright spot here. It's really right. hard to pick that apart right? Mm-hmm. It's really easy when you're inundated with statistics and, um, mm-hmm. you know, this has happened and this has happened and this is locked down and mm-hmm. this is the red zone, um, mm-hmm. you know, and it's, and one of the strategies is, you know, to take a detox from that, to not mm-hmm. listen to the news for X number of hours or X number of days. Um, yeah. And that's, mm-hmm. that's not to make light at all about mm-hmm. people suffering because people are suffering. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we're, we're fighting with the, the vaccinations and all of that. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of suffering right now. Um, mm. But I think when we can, we need to look at, okay, so what is working? Mm. You know, what, what is helping? What is different in, po- in a positive way, right? Mm-hmm. And is there any of that, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, working from home, that is a positive, mm-hmm. right? Uh, when I have a client, it takes me like two minutes to get to my desk, right? Mm-hmm. And a couple of times I've been late and I've said to them, I'm like, oh, I misjudged how long it would take me to get to, from the kitchen to my office, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Whereas before, you know, to commute to work, um, mm-hmm. you'd have to find a parking spot and, you know, mm-hmm. and lock your doors and get your mm-hmm. ticket. So, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. Uh, a couple of other things that I was thinking in terms of the, the kindness um, mm-hmm. and the grace is some self-soothing. Mm-hmm. you know, soothing stra- strategies, like, so choosing something that you feel comfortable with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and, and a lot of people are like, oh, don't suggest a bubble bath. So mm-hmm. I won't, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but some people really like that, you know, like I have a candle going, um, you know, some people like to open their window and there's a breeze. Um, and some clients, because I do, I do virtual now, um, if they get upset, I'll say, you know what, why don't you rub, rub your arms? Do you feel comfortable to do that? Right. Cause that's a nurturing, that, that's self-soothing, right? That nurtures. And there's actually a technique that I've, I learned about a couple years ago um, called havening. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's from the UK, I think. And um, he, the one I follow, he basically walks you through that kind of where you are like, you know, caressing and like mm-hmm. your face and um, different parts of your body. And mm-hmm. he walks you through it, like with his soothing voice. And mm-hmm. so I've, I've turned some clients onto that right? Like just a five, 10 minute activity, right? Um, Yeah. And in terms of um, another kind of journal prompt that I just thought about, um, like writing down some things that you've accomplished, Mm. right? Like proud moments. Like, and I'll say that to my clients in my intake, I'll say, what are you Mm -hmm. most proud of? You know, Mm -hmm. what accomplishment have you achieved where you're like, this really stands out. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes it's not what I think, Right. Mm -hmm. Because like I'll see something on their intake where I'll be like, well, you know, um, Mm -hmm. they've done this in school or they've traveled and that's not what comes out. Right. Mm -hmm. So I always try to keep a really open mind of what they'll share with Mm me. Um, So that's something that's important to put down in -hmm. your in your journal. Right. So when you're having a tough day, you can reflect like, yeah, I did that. I did that three years ago or, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, so many little pearls of wisdom and like, it's really nice how it's so holistic. Like we can use things like body, somatic practices, touching, Mm -hmm. soothing, breathing, and then also things working with our thoughts and mindset of like affirmations. And yes, yeah, we're proud of it's really nice to have that holistic um, picture of caring for ourselves, giving kindness to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, did you, I don't know if you asked me about the, my, um, my mental wellness program that I have. Is that, did you oh, mention no, that? Yeah, I'd love to hear more yeah. specifically about the program. Yeah. Yeah. So what I, what I realized in all, like all these themes that are, that were coming out is that 
I recognized with a mentor actually that um, nurses are really well equipped to help mm. clients with this kind of work, right? And it's it's not it doesn't necessarily have to be therapy. Not every client wants therapy. Not every client really needs it, right? Um, some clients just need some help with their stress and their coping. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So I I developed a course for nurses where it walks them through, like, you know, to become a mental wellness nurse. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's not something I ever dreamed I would do, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, Mm -hmm. I think, not that I take it for granted. I don't take my skill for granted and I don't take my passion for granted, but I didn't realize it could be something that other nurses would want to do. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've I put together earlier this year. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, just just like um, things like oh, you know, of course you have to have a basic understanding of common mental health diagnoses and the treatment mm-hmm. for them, uh, mm-hmm. but also looking at you know communication and mm-hmm. um, co- definitely all the coping strategies, right? Mm-hmm. And what kind of stressors are people presenting with, right? Like what mm-hmm. does what does burnout look like, right? Like what is the true definition of that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, relationships, there's a lot of relationship stuff going on, um, mm-hmm. mindset stuff for clients and mm-hmm. for nurses, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and boundaries, boundaries are really big for people, right? People mm-hmm. have a lot of stress at work. Um, mm-hmm. There's something going on right now in our city where, um, people are being asked to go to work in person and mm-hmm. the government has asked, like they've, the, the medical, like public health doctors have said, like, you know what, if they don't need to come to work, can you please just have them work from home mm-hmm. because people are being exposed ne- un- unnecessarily mm-hmm. and that's right. a boundary, right? Like, can you negotiate that with your boss, right? Mm-hmm. Can you say that without fear of, I might lose my job if I speak up, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So that, that's not necessarily therapy. That is, that's assertiveness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's boundaries is a really useful one. We're going to be going more in depth on a session about that later this Mm. month, but yeah, it feels like a really important one for nurses. I know when I worked in the emergency room, there's almost like a stigma against asking for asking, like setting boundaries, you know, Mm. like there's just like an expectation culturally within um, the hospital system of like, you know, taking on extra shifts, like working more hours, always being available, like, um, yeah, and just showing, like, showing up for the hospital instead of, like, thinking about, hey, like, what do I need for myself? So that's really great. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I know that when I worked part-time in the hospital, it was, Mm -hmm. I I think, two shifts a week about that, and I knew that when I was there, I was giving 110%. Mm-hmm. But if I had to stay longer, or, you know, mm-hmm. if I was asked, could you come in? I really right. didn't want to, right? Yeah. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I had my, these are my priorities, right? And when I'm not here, I'm with my family. And when I'm there, I'm not thinking about my family or trying not to. Um, right. And I know a lot of, a lot of nurses during the pandemic have said, well, I go in because I know what mm-hmm. it's like to work short staffed, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. And there's, I think some hospitals are doing mandatory overtime. Mm-hmm. Um which surprised me because I didn't know that that was happening. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the needing to care for yourself, you know, is mm-hmm. really, really important. Mm-hmm. And I think that nurses are givers by nature, the right. vast majority, right? We give mm-hmm. and and we do it because we want to, right? Mm-hmm. But then there's that line where you talk about mm-hmm. that assertiveness where it's easy for that to be taken advantage, you know? Yes. Where, and then the minute you say like, no, actually, and then, you know, the assertiveness can somebody can accuse you of being aggressive and it's like no that's not Mm -hmm. what I'm doing Mm -hmm. I I am truly being assertive Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. yeah especially when somebody doesn't expect it of you yeah Mm -hmm. yeah and recognizing how that important that is to maintain our kindness because if we are crossing boundaries then we end up in resentment or burnout or Mm -hmm. all Mm -hmm. things so yeah yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that sounds like a wonderful program. Are you sharing this with ner- like um, targeting nurses for this yes. program? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's on my website. There's details on mm-hmm. it on my website. I also right. on my Instagram on my link tree. There are some mm-hmm. free um, free mini journals. So if somebody okay. was interested in learning more, um, the Ford like the freebies, I call them freebies. Um, mm-hmm. One theme is gratitude and one mm-hmm. is wellness, like overall, like mind, body, spirit. And mm-hmm. then the other two, one is um, geared towards new grads, new nurse grads. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the other one is um, for more experienced nurses, well, even new grads, but um, mm-hmm. turn your memories into a memoir. 
So those are like the mini ones. And then in my Etsy shop are um, with the, the fuller versions um, mm -hmm. of those. And with the, mm -hmm. with the fuller ones in the Etsy shop, there are links to um, meditations and yoga mm -hmm. sequences that my cousin, who's a yoga teacher, uh, mm -hmm. put together for me. So when, you know, in the little module, in the little, little journal book, um, there's a page where you how does it work? Did I put it as a separate page? I can't remember, but you basically mm -hmm. click like it's an instant download is what it is. And right. Claudia, my cousin, uh, put them together for me. And I said, okay, this is for nurses. Um, mm -hmm. so she, you know, did certain, like, um, I think there was like a hip opener. And I mean, I don't do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of meditation, but she did specific ones that she thought would be helpful for nurses. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, wonderful. I love that. We'll definitely share those links on the website so Thank all you. the nurses who are listening in can access those resources. And yeah, yeah. And I, I did have a few specific um, journal prompts specific to this topic that I can, yeah. can go through. Great. Yeah, so the first one. Um, and I'm assuming whoever's listening can grab a pen or paper, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And, and, you know, I'm not saying that people start right now, uh, but they can jot mm -hmm. it down and then work yeah. on it, you know, at their own pace. Yeah. So, you know, what is in your control, right? And so you mm -hmm. can just list, you know, what, what do you actually have control of right now in your life? Mm -hmm. And what is not in your control, right? And I can share an example, our dryer stopped working a few days ago <laughs> and my husband wanted to call a repairman. I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want anybody in my house, you know, cause I, you know, we have to mask up and everything. Um, mm. So we went the weekend, I think we did four loads of laundry, everything dried. And my feeling is like, you know what, let's let it go for a bit. Like it's totally mm -hmm. okay. Like the air dried clothes, they smell good. And um, so mm. that's an example of definitely something that was not in my control. Mm. Um, and then my, the next sequence is, what do you want to let go of? Like, what is it that's not serving you that it's kind of hanging on you and causing some weight? And it's like, mm, I wish I didn't have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. Want to let go of, you know, are there, are there ways that you can start to let go of that? Like, is it possible mm -hmm. right now? Mm -hmm. And how will you feel when you let go of it? Mm -hmm. Right. So imagining, you know, what would, the day look like or what would your body feel like without that that worry or that you know if it's a person if it's a thing mm -hmm. um you know everybody has different things that they would be mm -hmm. writing about mm -hmm. and what's something that you're holding on to really tightly mm -hmm. right it could be a friendship it could be a hope like, oh, I hope this happens or yeah, I hope, you know, when, when my sister changes, like life will look like this or, mm -hmm. you know, so you, sometimes you have to really kind of dig. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't know I was thinking that, um, you know, like with, with the EMDR training that I'm doing um, the first weekend, we took turns being therapist, observer and um, mm -hmm. client mm -hmm. and being the client, things came mm -hmm. up that I, I didn't know were going to come up. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then I had dreams a couple nights later and then I processed and it was really interesting. Right. Mm -hmm. So when that kind of journal prompt, like, what are you holding on tightly? Like you might not even realize it till you sit down, mm -hmm. take a moment, you mm -hmm. know, and, and what I do when I sit to journal, I usually do it in the morning mm -hmm. and um, like, I usually have a candle. Um, I take a few deep breaths. Mm -hmm. I might have my coffee or tea and mm -hmm. then I, I have to center myself. So it's a few deep mm -hmm. breaths clear my mind and then, okay, what, what's there? Sometimes I'll choose a theme or a prompt. Mm -hmm. And then other times I'll just, whatever comes to mind, I start to write about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it doesn't mm -hmm. take very long. I don't think I spend more than really 10, 15 minutes at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. And then other times, you know, somebody might write for an hour or so. It just depends mm -hmm. on where you're at and what you, what you want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then my last one is, how can I change or let go of the things that are not working for me? Mm -hmm. right, so that example of the overtime, right? If you're asked to work more, right? And if that's sort of like a boundary that's, you know, and is it, is it hard for you to be assertive? So what can you do, right? And I've heard nurses say, like, they turn their phone off. 
like something mm. that simple, right? Mm-hmm. But it's powerful. It's powerful. Mm-hmm. And for mm-hmm. some people, it's hard to turn off the phone. Mm-hmm. So what, what can you let go of, right? And, and if you write it down, mm-hmm. it takes some space up, right? There's space. Mm-hmm. It's taken up space. It's not just mm-hmm. in your head. It's on paper. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I do, I do tell, like, I, I suggest to my clients that they write rather than type in a computer. Um, mm-hmm. But it, you know, whatever, whatever your preference is, like, sometimes mm-hmm. I'll, I'll do like a quick note on, on my phone, mm-hmm. either in my notes, or I'll text it to my husband. and I'll say, okay, that's for me. <laughs> because mm-hmm. it's a thought that I don't want to lose. And I'm like, never mind mm-hmm. that. It's just something I have to remember. Mm-hmm. But I, I like the feeling of paper, you know, and I've got so many journals, you know, for different themes. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I think I had nine. And one of my work friends said to me, like, that's not normal. And I'm like, sure it is. Sure it is. Like, this is for finance and this is for school. And this is the, you know, um, mm-hmm. I think I'm down to two or three now. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's for different, different projects and different things that are going on in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Thanks for, for sharing those practices. I really like, um, yeah, just the freedom and flexibility of some mornings you might feel like you want to just pre write. And sometimes it's really helpful to have a prompt just to access something that something you need to process. So um, I love that you're sharing some prompts that are really relevant to this theme. And I think I I will definitely work with them this week. I really like having prompts to inspire me. Thank you. Thanks thanks for sharing those. And I love that you incorporated the yoga with it too. It's great to to use those two things together. Just that I know I really struggle with that of like setting aside time in the morning to have a practice that's like, yeah, moving my body, like reflecting, setting, doing mindful things. So I really am mm-hmm. aiming to do that, to have either some yeah. sort of exercise and writing mixed together to work with the body and the mind together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've had some clients say that to me because sometimes I'll check in and I'll say, oh, did you do the mindfulness or did you do the meditation? Mm-hmm. And they've said to me like, yeah, I did it while I did my yoga. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm so smart, right? Yeah, uh, yeah and it makes total sense. So they didn't mm-hmm. um, sit to breathe, but they did it yeah. as part of their practice. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Or even sometimes I just like to run and people are like, oh, it's just exercise. But I'm like, to me, it's a meditation as well. You Absolutely. Know, just in our body and out of our busy minds. Mm-hmm. Is, yeah. Life. Yeah. 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 And I think the difference was that when I asked them about it, just like you're running, mm. they then saw it as different. It wasn't mm it wasn't yoga. It was yoga and meditation. Like mm-hmm. it was a, like a, like, oh yeah, I, I did both. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so useful, especially for busy nurses. We only have so mm-hmm. much time. <laughs> it's good to mix this. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for sharing um, your experience and your passion and all of these really rich little insights and tools that we can have to just take simple changes to shift the way that we that we care for ourselves and be more kind and graceful to ourselves. And <clears throat> I really feel that that affects the way that we t- interact with others too. So really inspires me about nurses getting into this work of self-care because it's like, not only are we helping ourselves, but we're really changing the culture of hospitals and the way patients are cared for the more we care for ourselves. So absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I find anything that I suggest, I always say to my clients, I've tried it myself. Doesn't right. mean I like it, but I've tried it. And if I've taken a course, it means I've done mm-hmm. the work. And I think mm-hmm. that's important. And I think, well, yeah. for me in mental health, I got to a point where, you know, when it was time for professional development, I was mm-hmm. taking courses that were of personal interest that would then mm-hmm. benefit me professionally. And it, it was really, really nice when I was able to, mm-hmm. to do it that way. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I mean, I had the hospital paying for courses that, you mm-hmm. know, 20 years earlier, I would never have dared to ask. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but why Mm -hmm. wouldn't I ask, you know? Um, And it does apply because I mean, you know, the, the mindfulness, the meditation, I was using Mm -hmm. that all the time in the hospital, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, and clients were open to it, you know, and there, Mm -hmm. there's such, I remember doing one, I think I had four clients with me and we were in a a small room together and we meditated together and the power and mm-hmm. I said to them, I said, you know what, I'm going to close my eyes too, because I need this, you know, it was mid afternoon, mm-hmm. it was a 12 hour shift. And, 
And I said, but you know, if there's an overhead page, I'm going to have to open my eyes or whatever. And it's so powerful. Like you could feel the energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? And the, I, I think the clients felt really good about themselves, you know, mm-hmm. to hear my feedback where it was like, wow, did you feel the energy? And they're yeah. like, uh, oh, okay. You know, and then, and then they felt comfortable to talk about it. Like, oh yeah, it felt like this. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, incorporating it into the hospital. And even you said you're an educator as well. I'd love to see it more incorporated into education for nurses too, just to yeah. be more. Yeah. And I think some schools are doing that. I can't say off the mm-hmm. top of my head who is mm-hmm. doing it, but I think it mm-hmm. is becoming part of the curriculum, like mm-hmm. mindfulness for nursing students. Yeah. 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 It's so important. Hmm. Cool. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us today and uh, looking you. forward to posting your resources on our on our community Facebook page and, and our website where we have your, your recording posted as well. So anyone who's listening in, you'll be able to access all of that on our website and our Facebook page, all of those resources and to connect with Marita directly um, if you wanna do one-on-one work as well or join this program. Um, So thank you so much, uh, everyone, for listening in and um, uh, stay tuned. We do these every Wednesday. Um, We have lots of interesting talks this month on um, hormonal health and gut health and how these physical aspects affect our mindset, um, how everything's connected and mind and body is really connected. And um, we also have another one on boundaries, which we touched on today. We'll go in a little bit deeper on that. So thank you so much for coming and thank you, Marita, again for um, sharing with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Have a good evening. You too.